what is going on guys today we're gonna to be going over how to stop hesitating as a trader um you know as an owner of a discord group and you know seeing countless and countless people doing the same mistakes over and over again because they're not confident in their own trades they hesitate right and i think hesitation is the biggest problem when it comes to trading and also your risk management strategy um as well because you could literally go a green month right you could have a great great green month and then one day out of the month you know you're not sticking to your risk management you have no plan all your profits for you know for example december could be gone right so i think this is going to be a great video for you guys as well as my risk management strategy video um so let's get right into it so first i want to start off with an example so let's say for example and i'm not the best at trolling this literally looks like an l um let's say for example you're playing a break right let's say it's the let's say it's a hundred dollar break and let's see let's say the stock comes up like this and you know obviously it's not going to be curved like this but let's just say it's you know testing this and your plan your strategy is to take the break above 100 right so let's say it finally breaks above 100 and you're playing with some size here right let's just say for whatever reason you hesitate and now you're not following your rules right it could be for a multitude of, of reasons right it's either because you're not confident in your own strategy or you're playing with too much money something along those lines and i'm going to get into that into the rest of the video but where i'm going with this is let's say you know you've been waiting for this break it's been about 30 minutes you're waiting for this hundred dollar break on let's say ticker you know l or something like that and it finally breaks so so what are you going to do now right you hesitate and you don't get in or you get in too late you're like oh i want to make sure it's going to continue to keep going and let's say you get in right here right and now it starts coming down and you're you're have no clue what to do now you're hesitating you're like oh i think i should hold or i don't know if i should hold or anything like that and it starts tanking down a little bit right and you're like oh i gotta get out like this is too much and then following your risk management strategy right even though clearly this guy that i'm giving an example about has no clue what he's doing right let's say it just goes up and it fomos right you're fomoing you're like oh you know actually i think this is going to go up you get in again and it tanks right all this could have been avoided by just not hesitating right and developing a plan with your risk management strategy and everything that i'm gonna go over in this video so don't be like this guy let's call him like davis or something don't be like davis and i'm gonna reference davis in this video um you know so everyone knows that this is davis right this is the guy that hesitates this is a guy that doesn't have a plan a risk management strategy something along those lines something's going wrong right he might have got taught from some youtube guru whatever right so let's get rid of all this and i'm using a new software um microsoft whiteboard for anyone that's curious i think i like this a little better um honestly instead of like my regular i don't even know i don't even know if i draw i don't usually draw i have like a epic pen download or something like that but here is the whiteboard right my first thing that i want to go over is you're not confident right so how do you build confidence i'm just going to draw these right how do you build confidence right in order to build confidence you have to be confident in your strategy right now in order to be confident in your strategy you can't just go all in right let's say this guy is playing with let's say davis is playing with ten thousand dollars right look at that it just corrects it for me sort of Okay, so let's say this guy's playing with $10,000. Let's say he risks about, mm, his max loss per trade is about $500, okay? Right? So that's about 0 0.05, that's about 0.5% of, you know, your entire account value. I suggest around 2% uh, of your account value, you know, the risk per trade. So in this example, it would be about $200. This guy's playing with 5%. He might be, I don't know what's going on with Davis. So keeping that in mind $500 right the reason why this guy's hesitating so much is because he's not confident in his trade so in order not in order to gain that confidence you need to lower this amount right he's not okay with risking $500 right you might not be okay with risking how much you're risking right you know you might not be okay with risking $200 and you might think you are but when it comes down to the trade you might be you know freaking out or you might not have a plan in place 
after you start freaking out, you might get a little too emotional. And all the emotions is this what if factor, right? You don't know, you know? As a trader, you gotta be aware that you will take losses. It depends on what you do with those losses and you know how you bounce back or how you play each trade to determine if you're really set out for this, right? Each and every single trader, you know, obviously doesn't like losing money. But again, it's all part of, you know, trading, right? Some people just can't handle losing money. And this is why I suggest sizing down, right? Davis might not be okay with losing $500 per trade, right? He might think he is because in reality, you know, this guy just doesn't like losing and he thinks that trading is just a, you know, get rich quick scheme. You know, he's going to keep winning and winning and winning. Oh, you know, I'm just going to sell here, buy here. And then he gets so emotional that instead of even losing $500, this guy lost two grand on one trade. And, you know, this is just, he's done, right? He's over. He's like, you know, training's not for me or anything like that. It's because of emotions and not being confident in his own place. So obviously, you know, no one likes losing money. Um, but again, you got to keep in mind, this is all part of trading, right? No one is okay with like, everyone's okay with losing money to an extent, right? But it comes to a point where did you lose money controlled or did you not lose money and you know, maybe you didn't follow your risk management strategy. Cause sometimes, right, you might come out with three to five dollars and you got emotional and you sold, even though you were green, that was not an okay sell because the moment that you sell for around break even for absolutely no reason because you got emotional, like let's say it was up a little bit, let's say you're up about two hundred bucks and it keep coming down and down and down, and you're like, Oh, I gotta sell here, you know, this is crazy, and then it just pops back up, right? Now, instead of, you know, making $200 or $400 on that trade, you only made about 20 bucks because you got emotional and you're like, yeah, I can't do this no more. It's all about the money and risk tolerance, right? So starting off with this example, let's say his maximum risk is $500. Now, obviously, Davis is not mentally okay with losing this amount, you know, with the example that I showed you. So let's see what he should have done, right? Let's see what he should have done on this trade. So what I suggest if you're not if you're getting emotional and you really aren't sticking to your plan or maybe you're just experimenting with trading in general like let's say you might have switched over to a different strategy or let's say you know maybe you're taking too much of a loss per trade or maybe you're selling too early I would suggest for example Davis was using $500 I would suggest cutting that in half or maybe even cutting that into a fourth so let's say, for example, Davis just wants to get this done. He wants to, you know, build up, right? This is the biggest thing is building up. So let's say, let's see, 500. Let's say he was now doing with $200, right? A little bit less than half of his, you know, $500 maximum loss. Now his loss is only $200 per trade. Even though that is more than half and he might not make as much money per trade, he's starting to understand that this is not a get rich quick scheme and you need to learn and build up. It's not a, you know, jump here and get up to here, right? That's just not how it works. You need to start building up. You know, you got to experiment with your strategy. You got to make sure you follow the plan through. So let's say he's risking $200 per trade. Now let's set this up. <clears throat> I kind of like this software too, which is pretty great. I think I'm gonna start using this a little more. I just need to draw a little bit straighter. All right, so let's say we have this hundred dollar wall here right and now he's only risking two hundred dollars per trade instead of the 500 right having less of a risk right davis with a 500 hundred dollar loss per trade max he's getting a little you know antsy he's getting a little emotional because he's thinking about it and he's for example like this right if the trade went like this, he's thinking in his head, yo, I'm about to lose $500 if this thing goes south. If I lose on this trade, I'm going to lose $500. I am, you know, I'm panicking. I'm getting emotional. I'm not okay with this, right? So this is why sizing down is a great thing because you actually build confidence onto the play. You'll be okay with taking that loss, right? You'll be mentally there and, you know, emotionally there instead of just freaking out and not being able to control your emotions when in the trade. So this is why sizing down is probably the best thing for beginners or even advanced traders that like are having trouble with keeping their emotions intact or having trouble with the strategy and the plan 
size down so you understand the fundamentals and then you can size up don't just size up right away because you think you're gonna you know make money like that yes 10 percent of a hundred thousand dollars is ten thousand dollars and if you make a 10 percent trade you make that but you also gotta look at the downside if you lose 20 percent, you just lost 20 grand like that and that's the other thing people don't see the other side of the coin essentially people just see heads but you got to be the edge of the coin you got to see heads and tails all right so you got to experiment with the strategy right now his max loss is 200 he's like okay you know i'm okay with losing 200 dollars, right he lost 200 dollars there but let's say for example he wins six out of ten trades right and he loses four so let's keep let's get a six and four here right Let's say on average he makes about, mm, let's see, let's say he makes about four, let's say he makes $500 per trade, right? So let's say each trade he makes about $500 and each trade he lost, it's about 200 bucks. Six times 500 is three grand. I gotta like draw this and let's say his loss is about eight hundred dollars, right? Understanding that as a trader even though this is a 60% win rate Following his strategy and his plan and he's finally able to hold a 60% win rate and he's actually Emotionally there and he understands risk and he understands how to control his losses He made about twenty two hundred dollars right out of those ten trades and if you're not Listen, this is an example, but at the same time, this is also for you guys to track your own trades. If you guys can't tell me what you guys did on the 10 trades, maybe not, you know, maybe you're not memorizing it, but if you don't have something written down that shows the mistakes, the losses, the gains from the past 10 trades, and I'm not even talking about the brokerage because obviously the brokerage will tell you how much you made so far in the week. I'm talking about yourself, either a notepad, you know, wherever you guys keep notes. Make sure you guys are tracking your trades so you guys know your mistakes and you guys know what you did wrong so you know for next time what to not do or what to do better, right? It's all about learning from your mistakes so you know what to do next time, right? It's all about that game plan. So now, instead of getting emotional, right, he's actually able to follow through. So, you know, he won six out of ten trades. Let me just delete this. Let's say, right, this example, $100 coming up to here, right? Oh my gosh. It's going up. He's like, all right, you know, I'm only risking about $200 here. I don't really, you know, I wouldn't say I don't care, but he's just not really emotionally impacted by, you know, his money coming up, right? You got to be, I wouldn't say a robot, but I would be more just have your brain on instead of your emotions, right? Make sure you're mentally prepared instead of emotionally prepared. Stop thinking with your emotions. He's up, right? He's up. Up, oh, dips a little bit. He's still chilling, right? The old Davis would have been like, oh, I got to sell here or I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm just going to sell or do I hold or something like that? No, Davis is more confident now because he's only losing $200. That's his max risk that he established, right? If he lost 10 trades, that would be two grand. Um, you know, but that's probably not going to happen because he's following through, right? He's learning from his previous mistakes. Holding, holding, right? Goes up. All right, you know. Oh, my risk management strategy tells me that, you know, I should get out here, right? I made about 40%. Or maybe there's something along the lines of there is a major resistance coming up. Let's say, let's say 120 is a major resistance and he sees that. Okay, you know, first test. Oh, if it doesn't break through in that first test, I'm going to get out. He gets out right here, makes about $500 on that trade. Now, the old Davis, right? It, it went like this, right? And then it went up. Oh, I got to sell here. Oh, I, you know, he makes $200. Or let's say he's just holding, holding, holding. It comes up a little bit. But let's say instead of this going like this, it just comes down like here. Oh, you know, I got to get out. This is crazy. Now he's down $500. And now he's emotionally impacted from this, losing $500 on his next trade. So now he's freaking out. He's literally shaking, taking this next trade. And he's like, all right, you know, this thing, let's say, for example, I hate deleting this thing, though. Let's say, for example, 
right here, right? The old Davis would have just held, held, held. Oh, you know, I'm still holding, still holding. Now he's down, down 500, right? Next trade, he takes, it's going to be the same way, except that he's going to get so emotional that he might sell here, or he just might not even take the trade and he hesitates, right? Maybe he won't get in on this break. Maybe he waits for a follow through at 105 and then he misses $5, um, you know, that $5 move, right? On options, that could have been 20% or so or 40% and he misses that trade because he hesitates because he doesn't want to lose that same amount of money he lost last time. So this is why I'm telling you guys to size down so you guys understand your strategy and understand your risk tolerance so you don't get impacted, right? If you lose 10 trades back to back to back to back to back, there is definitely an issue, right? Plan for the worst and hope for the best, obviously. But if you don't learn from, let's say you take three losses in the beginning, one, two, and three, right? You have to learn from that for the four, five, six, seven, eighth, ninth, and 10th trade, right? Learn from that. Maybe it's not going to be, you know, this great of a learning curve, you know, for the fourth, fifth, and sixth trade. But by the seventh, eighth, and ninth, and 10th trade, you should be, you know, maybe less emotional. And you should also be more mentally prepared because you know what you did wrong and you know how to follow through. If you're still emotional after sizing down from $500 to $200, just decrease this, right? Decrease it again, half it. Go to $100, go to $50. Right now, don't worry about the money you make, worry about the fundamental strategies, right? Learn the strategies, learn the risk management. So now, let's say, you know, for example, let's say you're only making $10 per trade and, you know, your risk tolerance is $5, right? And you're learning from this. Even though you're not going anywhere with $10, you're still learning, you know, the fundamentals. You're still learning all about that strategy and you're learning everything with risk management and everything like that. Now, you could size this up, right? Total risk, $10 per trade. You make about $20 per trade. It's not the best, right? But you're sizing up. You know, this is the biggest thing. Let's say Davis, for example, did it with $50, hundred dollars right he makes about a hundred dollars per trade risks about 50 right so we're just doing like this way right now he just sized up he went from fifty dollars to total risk of a hundred as he's learning right hundred to two hundred it's not about how much money you make now it's about how much knowledge you're gaining and how well you're able to replicate your strategy and not become emotional as soon as you start becoming emotional with this right you're starting to feel some oh my goodness you're starting to feel some sort of emotions coming in as soon as you feel that, size back down, right? Maybe not all the way down to 50, but cut it half, 75, right? Make it to $75, your total risk or something like that. So this is the, probably the biggest thing that people don't understand is it's not about getting rich now. When you see this, like when you see people making money, when you see me making money, don't look at it, right? Understand the trade and understand what went wrong, what went right on your own trades and learn how to not be like Davis in the beginning where he hesitated on this break. The only reason why you hesitate is because of fear. You don't know, right? I'm going to call it the don't know factor. And you're not confident, right? That's the three biggest things. And that's the three biggest things that you have to work on. And I think sizing down is probably the best thing to help with confidence. Help with, you know, obviously, if you're paper trading, and this is why sizing down works. If you're paper trading, there ain't no emotions in that play. Like you don't care about that money. And this is why sizing down, you have to play with don't care money, right? Maybe $100 of Davis's don't care money, right? He doesn't care. Perfect, right? Start out with don't care money, size down to something like that. Maybe you'll be a little bit emotional, right? But find out where your don't care money is at so you can learn the strategy and then advanced, right? It's like, it's like stairs, honestly. Let's say he sized down, you know, maybe he was up here. Maybe he was risking $500, right? But let's say he sized down. Finally, he listened to my advice. Maybe he watched the YouTube video, left a like, subscribed, and uh, comment down below that he wants to see more videos like this. Um, but let's say he just sized down and he started out with 200. Now he's sizing up as he's learning to 50. And let's say, oh my goodness, 300. And he's just sizing up, right? Now he's taking a bigger leap almost doubling this to 500, still doing great, right? I would rather see someone's calendar, and this is why, you know, sometimes 
um, you know, calendars are great at showing what kind of trader you are. I would rather see a calendar go like this, right? Your PL calendar. I would rather see it go like this, right? It's not supposed to be this big, but you guys get the example. I'd rather see that than something like this. Even though you still made money at the end, this is not okay at all. I don't care if you're up 500% on the year. This is not okay at all. I would rather see this. Right? I would rather just see something like that. Just shows that you know how to properly manage your risk. And at the same time, you're also getting consistent on your plays, right? Look at that. Look how managed his risk is. And look at his profits, right? He's obviously growing his account. Maybe taking some L's, right? But that's all part of the game. You know, overall, he's still green, right? Same place as the other guy, except he's now controlling his risk. And I think that's the a number one, the biggest thing ever, right? Let's say your year. Let's say your profits are literally like this. And in December, maybe, you know, you got so emotional that you were just going to hold it. Oh, I'm down 20%. I'm just going to hold it. Let's say this was the start of the year and this is the end of the year. You, you literally can lose all your profits in a single trade, just not following your risk management strategy. So this is why risk management, this is why I like to catch it when, you know, you're first starting out. You got to learn it like that when you're first starting out. Because then if you don't make that mistake early on and you, you make the mistake later, it's going to get a whole lot worse for you. If we didn't catch Davis losing, you know, on those trades and, you know, now Davis finally learns. But if he didn't learn, let's say he finally grew his account to $100,000 and he was holding that, he lost 50 grand. He lost 50% because he was just holding and he was so scared and emotional now he's down to fifty thousand dollars. He lost fifty thousand dollars. Now, when people say you gotta pay your tuition in the market, yes, but at the same time you gotta learn from that. It's like you going to college and you know literally not learning a thing and still paying tuition, right? You have to learn. You gotta pay tuition and learn from it, and that's the other biggest thing. But that's all I have for you guys today. Uh, I'm gonna make more videos like this. Hopefully, um, if you guys liked it, leave a like, comment down below what stocks you guys are looking at anything you guys want me to make a video about literally anything just comment down below lander or something like that um but if you guys like this video make sure you guys also hit that subscribe button follow the instagram um lander schlesinger it should be on this side around right here and on top of that make sure you guys go view those other videos uh, as well but other than that i'll see you guys next time